Thanks for tuning in to this latest video weather briefing. We wanted to provide an update on this past winter. And as the winter winds down, take a look at the summer 2018. We've had some extreme weather over the past couple years and mostly on the dry side. This chart here shows the number of billion dollar disasters and the recent trend over the past several years. Take a look closely and you can see wildfire and severe storms as well as flooding are a big component and especially 2017 tropical cyclones. Speaking of being on the dry side, so precipitation so far for the water year since October 1st, 2017, you can see most of Southern California is 25 to 50% of average. So less than half of what we should have received in some places or even lower in parts of extreme Southwest California. You see parts of Northern California, there's a small area that is coming out right around normal. Most of the West, especially the Colorado River Basin. Very dry conditions this winter. Did we have a miracle March? Uh, well, not quite. If you look at the percent of normal for March, you can see the blue shaded areas stand out as very wet, over 200% of normal, so more than twice the average March for the Sierra Nevada and parts of Central California. Us in Southern California at the bottom of the map, though, you can see it fell quite short most areas not getting into the normal category and considerably below in San Diego. San Bernardino Mountains from that one atmospheric river did do well and broke out near normal with precipitation just for March though. How about in the mountain areas more specifically the Big Bear region you can see over eight inches of precipitation rain and snow. We still have the summer to go but right now the fourth driest that we've seen on record for Big Bear. Now what about snowfall up in that region? You can see it was rather dismal, not the least amount of snow we've seen as there's been several drier years including 2013 and 14 which was bad across the entire state. You can see just from a couple snowstorms in January and March Big Bear ended up with just shy of 18 inches of snow. Now take a look at your key climate locations here, and this is where some of the numbers are staggering. Santa Ana Fire Station, long climate records there, sitting at about two and a half inches of rain since October 1st, this water year. That's only 19% of where they should be. Not much better when you go to Riverside or even in our mountains in San Diego County. How about out in the desert? Still only 39% of where it should be. And in San Diego, our dismal 3.19 inches is only 31% of where it should be. With most of our water season running out of time, you can also take a look here at some past years and how it compares. And for San Diego specifically, here is how the water year 2017-18 ranks against other years. Now for the departure from normal, for temperatures, take a look at this map here. You can see that temperatures were warm. And this has been an ongoing problem with the very warm winters, warm summers, the early snow melt, and the stress on the vegetation and soil. Temperatures in Southwest California several degrees above normal, spanning from October 1st through April. Speaking of temperatures, even in the mountains, take a look at this here, Big Bear. Right now, for average temperature, high and low is running second place for one of the warmest years in terms of since October 1st, the water year on record. And here's a look at temperatures for the San Diego area, breaking in the top 10 for the water year. You can see we're at 63.1 degrees. and Recent record-breaking years are also listed in red. Now, temperatures in our region continue to run warm. This chart here shows the average monthly temperature in San Diego, high and low, averaging above normal since October 2013. So in other words, we have not had a month that's come out below normal since that time. Pretty remarkable. 
Now, when you look at temperatures as a whole across all of Southern California, we call it the South Coast, the past 60 months has been the warmest on record, as shown in the chart here, and the numbers listed below. Now, when you look at the South Coast over the past 36 months, perhaps we've reached a peak with the warmest period ending before last year, as you see a little top off on the temperatures as shown here. How is this impacting our drought? Well, the latest drought monitor, which is a collaborative effort with the National Weather Service, universities, and other federal and state and local agencies across the country, you can see the D1 and D2 remains in place across Southern California. Basically, it was residual from the 2012 to 16 drought. Unfortunately, it is expanding from the east, however, due to the lack of precipitation in the Colorado River Valley and the southeast deserts. Snowpack in the state is coming out about half of where it should be. And of course, precipitation in Southern California, only 20 to 40 percent of where it should be after a record breaking start, which was the driest on record through early January 2018. Here's a look more regionally at the drought monitor and you can see conditions have worsened across the Colorado River Basin especially and now moving into extreme southeast California due to the lack of precipitation you saw in the prior slides. Speaking of precipitation in the mountain regions take a look at the Sierra Nevada and this is the core of the Sierra Nevada where we can see they are still shy of normal sitting at about 39 percent of precipitation. The record breaking 2016-17 is listed in green on the top of the chart and the core of our drought back in 13 through 2015 is also shown here as those were well below average as well. You can see the step in December, February, and March and those were the significant atmospheric rivers that occurred with a sharp rise in precipitation totals during those periods in our mountains. This map here depicts the different years and the snowpack across California. The dark blue line is the current conditions, which are running about 25 to 40 percent of where they should be on an average year. The record low snowpacks of 76, 77, 2014, 15 shown below. And the yellow line is last year's snowpack, which was still shy of the biggest snowpack we've seen back in 82, 83. So despite the beneficial snow we saw in March, conditions are still well below average for snowpack. We saw conditions across Southern California in mid-February that were reflective of the very warm winter and the lack of snowfall. Now our water supply is doing a little bit better and this is thanks to the 2016 to 17 wet season. A lot of this water came down from Northern California. Some of our local larger reservoirs sitting at about 85 to 90 percent capacity. Soil moisture is a great indication of lingering drought effects or the lack of precipitation or early snow melt. And you can see parts of the coast, Northern California, which had a subpar year, and even the Southern Sierra Nevada continuing to run dry. Even here in Southern California, our mountains and our coastal areas and deserts, very dry soil conditions already. The fuel moistures are indicated here and you can see that fuel conditions remain very dry. In fact, back in December, we were record dry down to about 3% for coastal Southern California. We did have a little bit of green up in the spring. It was short lived and now we're seeing a sharp dive in our fuel conditions as shown here into late April. The blue area is the current conditions. The red is the record low conditions. The gray shade, that is the normal or average. Now what's going on in Pacific Ocean? Well, we've seen large pockets of warm water lingering over the past couple years. This is an image from the satellite back in March. And you can also see the cooler La Nina conditions. Now when we flash forward to April, the most current image shows that same large swath of warmer than normal sea surface temperatures extending out in the Pacific with the La Nina conditions prevailing. 
And then a mixed bag across most of the Pacific, except when you get up to near Alaska in the Bering Strait, very warm water. Here's a look at the timeline of La Nina over the past several months, and you can see it's been rather persistent, a weak but persistent La Nina condition in the equatorial Pacific Ocean, but north of that very warm large area of water. How about further out in May? It looks like that we have about average chance of seeing precipitation, and keep in mind we typically see very light precipitation in the month of May either way. But most importantly, temperatures, high confidence of them running above normal for May 2018. So potential for an early heat wave. Now the outlook for June through August 2018 doesn't reveal much different information showing above normal conditions expected for all of the West, including California and really no indication of a stronger than normal monsoon condition, except for in parts of New Mexico region, and monsoon not expected to extend into the Pacific Northwest area shown below normal for precipitation. This outlook is updated once a month. Here are some resources from the National Weather Service and other agencies that keep track of snow, soil, water supply, temperature, and precipitation. Thanks for joining us.